Well, I, w I want to thank you very much for inviting me uh, to open this, uh, this really interesting uh, 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 series of events. And I have to apologize to you for uh, not speaking German. Mein Deutsch ist sehr schlecht. Uh, but I will try to uh, uh, read to you uh, slowly because, uh, like all English people, I tend to speak very quickly. Um, and I'm going to read to you uh, something that I've been thinking about uh, in the relation of technology and society for a long time, and particularly digital technology. Uh, some years ago, John Seeley Brown and Paul Duguid published a book, the, Li the Social Life of Information, a book that sought to explore the social consequences of the technological revolution in communications in the 1990s. These consequences are even more important for us today as new communications devices and programs transform how we make friends, shop, and work. Seely Brown and Duguid hoped, as prophets do, that the information age would usher in deeper communication between people, in particular, that new technologies would expand people's capacity to cooperate. This evening, I'm going to explore with you why things are not turning out quite as they hoped. I've been recently studying cooperation and its perils in modern capitalism. The modern economy celebrates competition rather than cooperation, but in fact no large-scale enterprise can flourish by raw aggression alone. Nor can the institutions of civil society, such as schools, hospitals, and communities. We need to cooperate and cooperate well in order to prosper. The most difficult challenge modern society faces is how to cooperate with people who differ. That is, how to work well with people of different political opinions, religious convictions, or cultural origins. And more elementally, this is a challenge to work well with people we do not understand. So why I think I want to call this book Zusammenarbeit. I don't know if that quite works in German, but it's the idea in English. New communications technology should enable serious, hard cooperation of this sort. In the recent uprisings in North Africa, they've indeed done so. In Egypt, for example, Twitter, never meant for this purpose, has connected people to classes they've had little contact with before let alone cooperated with politically. They're astonishingly useful devices politically uh, in, in these uprisings. In Europe, however, new communication tools are so far not used for this serious, potent effect. And we need to find out why this is, why we are behind our North African colleagues in the use of this uh, technology. I'll start with a paradox formulated long before anything like a telephone, let alone an iPhone, existed. It's called Burkhardt's Paradox. The great historian of the 19th century, Jakob Burkhardt, described the modern era as an era of brutal simplifiers. It seemed to him a paradox because he thought as society's material conditions become more complex, its social relations become ever more crude. If radios had existed in Burkhardt's time, for instance, the stark us and them language on right-wing American talk shows would have served him to define crude. If Burkhardt could have web surfed, he would have found similar evidence in blogs of all political persuasions all over the world. 
We might imagine Burkhardt, I love the image of this, this staid Swiss. We might imagine Burkhardt listening to Lily Allen's famous song lyrics, fuck you, fuck you very, very much, because we hate what we, you do and we hate your whole crew. This would epitomize him, to him modern society's use of the pronoun we. Such aggressive impulses hardly create a climate which encourages people to practice cooperation with those who differ. As a concept, brutal social simplicity means that people project themselves categorically in terms of fixed identities. We want to dwell for a moment on that phrase, brutal simplifiers. Burkhardt coined it early in his thinking life to characterize Islam, particularly Muhammad's effect on his followers. As Burkhardt matured, he abandoned this racism and applied the phrase to his own times. And I suspect his friendship with Nietzsche may have made him more self-critical as well. The nationalism nascent in the 19th century now seemed to the mature historian to usher in an age of brutal simplifiers. Nationalism denying the mixtures of peoples and the multiple identities of individuals in each nation. The paradox here is that the 19th century was also the great age of industrial development, of productive technology, of far-flung imperial trade, of an ever more complicated material life. Material culture produced complexity, while the sort of culture embodied by nationalism tended to produce brutally simple ideals of communal life. Is there an equivalent paradox today in the relations of material and social culture? We might be tempted to reject comparison at all because Burkhardt's can seem the familiar conservative story of the pre-modern past seeming better spiritually than the material present. This is the cultural conservative's story of decline and fall. Yet Burkhardt was not a reactionary. He believed to be under threat the kind of cosmopolitan individualism celebrated in his great study of the Renaissance, or celebrated today by someone like Ulrich Bech. Burkhardt saw the first glimmer in early modernity of the possibility that people could move between social milieu, between cultures, deepening themselves in the process. Burkhardt celebrated the impact of difference upon the self. Nationalism, identity politics, uniform solidarity erode just this early promise of modernity. Could the material revolution embodied in communications technology help people realize this Renaissance promise today? Burkhardt's celebration of difference and multiple identity should be our own. But the argument I wish to make is that com complex communications tools have run ahead of our ability to put them to sophisticated use. They've particularly not enabled us to uh, practice cooperation of the demanding sort. That is to say that modern society creates material complexity before knowing what to do with it. 